you turn in your Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm going to talk to you today about chastening and pornography addiction. And uh, I know that subject very well. It's a sin I struggled with for many, many years. And I know if you're watching me right now, you're struggling with it too. I know. I know what it's like. So I'm going to take you through the scriptures here. I'm not going to just stand here and give you some psychiatric drivel about how that uh, uh, we all have urges and we all have that. It, let's see what the scriptures say. You're going to find that the help of man is vain. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 21 through 22, and you're going to need a King James Bible for this. Don't mess with the ones that come from the Vatican, the NIV, ESV, New American Standard Version. New King James Version is a blending of the Vatican type readings and the uh, ones that underlie the King James without going into a big detailed thing on it. But uh, look it up. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21 through 22. Prove, old, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Uh, if you're saved and you're looking at pornography, you're not following that verse. You are not abstaining, abstaining from all appearance of evil. You are directly disobeying God. What's going to happen to you? We're going to talk about that. Romans chapter 1. I'm going to give you solutions too, by the way, how to get away from pornography addiction. I was an addict for years and years and years uh, before I got saved and even a little while after I got saved. It didn't just go away like that as soon as I got saved, as soon as I was born again. I struggled for a little while. All right, and there were some reasons for that. I'll be getting into that here as we continue. But uh, I'm going to tell you how to get away from this sin. Romans chapter 1, verse 24 through 20, or chapter 2, verse 3. We'll go down through these here. Um, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts. What is lust of your own heart? Have you felt it? You're going along just fine and you don't, you're not really thinking about pornography and all of a sudden something triggers you. You see something at the store, you see something, you're walking past the television, you shouldn't be watching television. Um, but you see something and it triggers you. And all of a sudden that lust starts to build and you start to feel that temperature rising and you start to feel the blood pressure in your head and you start thinking, oh, and that lust starts to overtake you. Mm -hmm. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You say, well, pornography, I'm not dishonoring my body between somebody else. I'm not, there's no physical contact. Uh, well, there is some physical contact with yourself. But, uh, you know, you say, well, it's not a problem. Let's keep reading. Because, you know, you're thinking it's just about me and what I'm looking at and it's innocent. I'm not hurting anybody. We'll see about that. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Uh, part of pornography addiction is you're worshipping the creature more than the creator. If you fear God, you're not going to look at pornography. Just as simple as that. You fear Him. No, not interested. Um, you worship the creature more than the Creator. Verse 26, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another, Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Uh, most people that I've known um, that get into pornography viewing, it will eventually lead into darker things like sodomy and some even go as far as to getting into looking at bestiality or uh, maybe pedophilia if it goes really bad. Um, it starts out with the just soft core porn and then it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until you're into the hardcore stuff. Why? Well, because that's the nature of lust. It's unnatural. It's not uh, something that God has put in you. It's a lust of the flesh. Verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. When was the last time you looked at pornography and had hymns playing? honoring Jesus Christ and singing about Jesus Christ. You don't. You don't like to retain God in your knowledge, do you? How about uh, while you're looking at pornography on your computer, looking at here and reading your Bible there. Read your Bible out loud sometime while looking at pornography. See how that goes. 
you're going to feel an extreme war. Put that Bible away. I don't want that Bible around here. Mm -hmm. God will give you over to a reprobate mind. Okay, now I don't mean in the sense of if you're saved, he's going to turn you over to a reprobate mind and you, somehow you can't get saved or whatever else. You can watch my study on the whole reprobate uh, doctrine thing, the doctrine of reprobation and the stupidity of that thing. But there will come a point in time when the Lord's just going to, when you're saved, you'll get into that thing where you're almost just like a lost person. Again, I'm going to show you the other scriptures on this, but where the Lord just simply says, you want to do that? I'm just going to let you fall flat on your face. I'm going to let you ruin your life. Back to that then. But uh, verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God. We'll get back to that one too later on. Despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. You know, it's not very natural affection when you're looking at airbrushed uh, models and things and videos online and whatever else and you're getting sexual thrill from that. That's uh, unnatural affection. That's what that is. Verse 32. You see, but, but see, there's no physical contact, you see. I'm not actually, you know, it says up there, uh, verse 24, about dishonoring their own bodies between themselves. That I'm not doing that. It's just innocent. It's me in the privacy of my own home looking at some stuff just to get a thrill and whatever else. Uh, you know, so there's nothing there. Verse 32 gets you. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Got you. It doesn't work. You say, well, I'm saved and I just, you know, I watch a little bit, you know, I just a little bit here and there. Um, you're under God's judgment. Let me tell you, I can speak from experience. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, let's read that. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doeth the same things. Doest the same things. Did you ever go and say, uh, yeah, I think sodomite marriage is wrong and sodomy is wrong and all this other stuff. You'll take those stands, but inwardly you go home and you, you look at a little bit of a lesbian stuff. I know men are, are a lot of times attracted to seeing two women together. Hypocrite. You're a dirty, rotten, filthy hypocrite. And you know it. I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. Maybe if you're women out there, you know, uh, there's some kind of a thrill perhaps in seeing two men together. Then don't speak against gay marriage. Hypocrite. You say, well, then I can't ever. Oh, no, you get it cleaned up. Get that stuff out of your life. Then you can. Same thing for you men out there. And maybe you've gone so far as a man to actually think it's attractive to see two men together. You're starting to mess around with that. Um, let me tell you something. You get into that level of pornography, it's not going to be long before you're looking at animals. And before, I mean, there were there were guys in my high school, back in the early 1990s, all right, that were talking about you know seeing you know a woman and a donkey in a, in a video and things. They were watching at one of the guys' houses. Uh, you know, I talked to a guy I used to work with a black guy that uh, when I used to build boats many years ago, and this guy, he was telling me about how that they were you know bestiality with with farm animals when he was growing up you know he saw other kids doing it he didn't he said i don't want any part of that but he said they were doing it all the time down in georgia stuff goes on all right and how do you get that wicked how do you get that to that point because it starts off with soft core porn then it gets hardcore and then it gets worse and worse and worse you're inexcusable and you live as a hypocrite when you're a christian because you're on this hand, you're condemning sodomite marriage and sodomy and things. You're saying it's a great evil and a great wickedness in our nation. It's a blight on our nation. But over here, secretly, in the privacy of your own home, you're getting a thrill from it. You're a hypocrite. <laughs> you are a disgusting hypocrite. Face it. Get to that point where you can think of yourself that way. Don't hide behind something. Well, well I know others that other people don't marry or matter. You're going to stand before God someday. 
And I had to come to that place and understand that myself. And understand, I'm going to stand before God and give an account for myself someday. And if I don't quit this pornography, God's going to drop me dead. And I'll get into some of those experiences later on as we continue here. It is a serious, serious sin. Verse 2, Romans chapter 2, verse 2. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Again, remember this later on. These are God-hating people that are involved in pornography. I'll just kind of spoil it a little bit. You are getting a thrill, a sexual, lustful thrill from the enemies of Jesus Christ. Nobody that poses in pornography that's in adult films or whatever else, nobody that's involved in that stuff has a love for Jesus Christ. Not one person. They're all God-hating reprobates. Oh, hey, uh, later on the night, by the way, i, I got to get done with my sermon here because there's a coven of witches over here that's going to be having a barbecue, and I'm going to go hang out with them. You say, why would you do a thing like that? Uh, pretty much for the same reason that you look at pornography and don't have any conviction. You're getting pleasure from the enemies of God. You see? And I'm not going to a witch's barbecue. Okay? <laughs> not going to happen. But look at verse 3. And thinkest thou this, O man that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? That's written to a saved person. Understand that. You say, oh, good. Then that means that there's other saved people to do it, so I can feel better about my own sin. Uh, that's a problem. And again, that's going to be one of your biggest temptations. Well, because there's so many people, so many men out there, and so many other Christians out there that are struggling with the sin of pornography, then I guess I'm not really that bad, am I? Um, you don't compare yourself with other people. The Bible is your standard. And you know that you're wrong. And let me tell you something. The little thrill that you get from looking at pornography and the, excuse me, but the masturbation that follows it, that little bit of a thrill, that little bit of time that you get there um, is not worth the guilt that you feel afterwards and that feeling of separation and breaking of fellowship from God. And you're not going to lose your salvation if you're saved. If you're genuine, genuinely born again, He saved you. He bought you with a price, and that is His blood. All right? You're not going to lose your salvation, but you're sure going to lose fellowship. And you're going to feel like a dirty, vile creature because that's what you are. Come to the realization that that's what you are. You say, well, I'm just going to post a comment and we can all just kind of have a little kumbaya moment down here and just kind of all little Alcoholics Anonymous, you know. I'm, I'm you know, I'm uh, William and I'm a pornography addict. Uh, I, my name is, uh, you know, Todd and I am a pornography addict too. And we can, oh, you know. <laughs> Understand that you are under God's condemnation right now. You're under God's judgment. And it's going to lead to chastisement, chastening in your life. Go to the book of James. James chapter 1. <coughs> James chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, evil neither tempteth he any man. God's not put you, oh, God's just made me a red-blooded man, that's why I'm looking at the, no, no, you're a pervert, okay? If you're looking at pornography, you are a sex pervert. And if you don't quit, you might eventually become a registered sex pervert. Because your thrill, the, the, the poison of pornography is that it has to get worse and worse and worse and sicker and more twisted as time goes on for you to get your thrill. And you know what I'm talking about. You're looking at things right now that you wouldn't have looked at when you first got started. Don't even tell me about it. Verse 14, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it didn't say that. It said, do not err, lost people that have no Holy Spirit in them. Um, that's all he's talking about. Because saved people don't look at things and they're not tempted and drawn away of their own lust and whatever. Uh, no, it says beloved brethren. And it lines up perfectly with the Pauline epistles, so don't try to duck that either. You know? But let's look at chastening. What happens? Chastening, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 11. 
And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Boy, there's something for the politically correct people. Scourgeth a son. What would you think would happen if uh, some liberal lost people were out there and they go buy some house out in the country and the father's out there and he's just got this scourge and he's just whipping the living daylights out of this boy? That's a picture of God the Father taking care of one of his children, the sons. And I'll tell you, if you haven't experienced it already, if you're just newly getting into pornography and whatever and, and with the whole thing, you're going to get a whipping sometimes that's so severe uh, you'll get close to losing your life sometimes. I did. I just about was paralyzed in an accident the one time. Why? Messing around. And my father had to scourge me. He had to chasten me. He said, well, just terrible. No, it's not terrible. It's called love. If God wouldn't have stopped me on the path that I was on, looking at that wicked stuff, if he wouldn't have stopped me, I don't even want to think about it. What could have happened? I don't even want to think about where my perversion could have taken me. I'm sure glad that my Heavenly Father whipped me and beat me. Another time I was taking a fan apart. And a uh, box fan, old box fan. I was ripping the thing apart and I grabbed the wires and yanked it. And I went right down across. Sliced my thumb. Still have the scar to prove it. Right there. See it on my thumb there? I don't even have a tenon in the top of my thumb. I cut it in half. Said, oh, we can fix it up. I said, no, nah, don't bother. <laughs> <You know? laughs> kind of weird that way, but you know. So I can't, go, I can't go the whole way up with my thumb. Why? I was messing around in sin. He scourged me. He whipped me. Uh, you say, well, but Brother Brian, you're, you're this great man of God and you've done a lot for the Lord. Yeah, now. But boy, when I first got started. See, God saved a sinner. He didn't save a saint. I became a saint after he saved me. But uh, he, had a, he had a mess on his hands. When I first got saved, I was very wicked. Extremely wicked. That's why I got saved. I wanted a new life. I knew that I couldn't overcome this temptation, this pornography stuff, and I was getting sick and tired of it. It's not a real relationship. It's empty. It's hollow. Meaningless. You know what I mean? Of course you do. Verse 7. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. A bastard is somebody who doesn't know who their dad is. And it's so funny. I hear people professing Christians and they say, oh, I just can't relate to the God of the Old Testament. <laughs> well, then you're a bastard. And I don't mean that as a, in the sense of profanity. I'm using a dictionary scientific term. A bastard is somebody who doesn't know their father. If you can't relate to the God of the Old Testament, it's because you don't know him. He's not your father. You're a bastard. Yeah. You see people, they say, well, you know, I look at a little bit of pornography, but it's not a big deal. I go to church, I help out, I'm a deacon, I'm an elder, I'm, I'm you know, whatever else. And take that, come on, out a little bit, you know. Out in my garage, I got the, you know, swimsuit, uh, you know, swims, uh, what's what's the thing, sports guy, or sportsman, I can't even think of the thing. Sports Illustrated, I think, swimsuit, you know, calendar out there. I got the, that's pornography. You say, oh, come on, they're not naked, they, they got, you know, swimming suits on. Okay, is it leading to lust? You know, you got basically in her underwear, essentially, and a lot of times they don't even have that on and whatever, you know, it's the swimming suit and thing. But that's not going to lead you to lust. Please, give me a break. Guys with uh, swimsuit types of things, calendars, you know, bikini women in their garages, they're porn addicts. Every case I've ever known, every case I've ever known, they'll have uh, that on the garage, you know, wall or their shop wall or whatever else, and in there, underneath their bed, a bunch of Playboy magazines or 
Hustler or Penthouse or some other kind of, I don't even know what they are anymore. I'm, thank God I'm a victory over pornography for many years now. But, you know, and then, of course, now you got the Internet. You don't even need the magazines, the paper magazines. You get caught going out and getting that stuff or going to the adult bookstore or whatever else. You know, you just get it online now, you know. Mm -hmm. Sure. Where they make records of you, you know. And, again, I've said that in other studies. Uh, do you realize, uh, Christian out there, if you're looking at pornography, they're making records of you? But wouldn't that be interesting if uh, there was ever a trial and it came up and uh, they subpoenaed all that information every time that you clicked on that mouse, every website, every video, every picture that you've ever looked at, and it's all on record. Oh, don't worry, brother. I, I'm, I don't go to the adult bookstores, brother, because I know it would be a bad testimony if anybody that saw me and knew me and saw me walking into that XXX shop, I walk in there and it would be a bad testimony. What do you think you're doing when you look at it online? You know, it's just private. It's just nobody sees me. My wife went away or my dad or my mom went away and nobody's looking. I can look at it. Yeah. And the computer's going, nope, they clicked on that one. They clicked on this one. They clicked on that one. Record, 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 record. You say, well, I'll go in and delete my history, my browsing history. It doesn't matter. My little puny website that I have, kingjamesvideoministries.com, I can go in and I can see everybody that clicked on my website. I can see the location of your house. I can see the ver version of Windows or Apple, you know, the Mac or whatever that you're using. Screen resolution, everything with my puny little website. What do you think the porn people can find out about you? Whew. Scary, isn't it? Verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. <clears throat> well, you know, this, this little holy Joe over here, you know, a little Mr. Goody Two-Shoes. Amen. That's what I want to be. That's what you should want to be. We should be wanting to be made partakers of His holiness. And understand, you can't have His holiness when you're watching His enemies. Let that one sink in for a minute. You're watching a bunch of people that hate Jesus Christ and that hate God. They hate the Bible. They'd, like to they'd love to destroy Jesus Christ. And you're going to get entertainment from them. A sexual thrill watching these people. But God's going to be okay. God, just, you know, it's the prophecy of your own home. Everything's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you got some hard times coming. <clears throat> Okay, I guess that's the last verse I'm going to go to there. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's go there. I'm going to give you some good solutions here in a minute. I'm just going through the scriptures right now about chastening. You say, well, brother, that's that's over in the book of Hebrews. So we'll just duck that. You know, We, we don't have to worry about that because it's in the book of Hebrews. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 through 32. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. The purpose of communion, of coming together and remembering what Jesus Christ did on the cross, is a time of self-examination. It's a time that the Holy Spirit's going to start putting into your mind, you're wrong here, you're wrong there, you need to clean this up, you need to clean that up, you better get that stuff out of your life. You know? I'm a father now, and I call my son in sometimes and I say, um, son, what's that on the floor? Uh, my toys? And I say, uh, didn't I tell you to clean that up earlier? Yes. Why did you disobey me? And then he gets punished. How would I be a just father if I said, son, come in here, whack, spank him. And he says, what did I do, dad? Doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. I'm going to tell him where he's wrong. And that's the whole purpose of communion. That's the whole purpose of that time of reflection. You're thinking about 
my word, Jesus died a terrible death on the cross and the, and the pain that he suffered and everything else, and he did it for my sins. Do you think the Son of Man, the Son of God there, Son of Man to the Jews, you know, Son of God to us, you know, do you think, because they're looking for the lineage of David, say it that way, but do you think Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, um, do you think he wants to see the pornographic images that you're filling your mind with? Do you think he enjoys that, having to die for those sins? You see, he died for your sins, past, present, and future. Do you think he wants to be there on the cross, and he wants to be there, and he wants to see those things, that wicked, vile perversion that you're filling your mind with? But he's just going to be okay with it? No, he's not. So what do you do? You say, well, I'm just not, you know, I, I don't really have conviction. Okay. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Is that what you want? To be weak, weak and sickly? You say, well, God wouldn't go after my health for me looking at pornography. Uh, oh, yes, he would. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he has. Yes, he will. And uh, if you don't get that thing figured out, um, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth death. Over in the book of James. Many sleep. Written to a Christian. You want the Lord to kill you? Verse 31. You say, well, brother, what am I supposed to do? For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. You better start judging yourself. That's why you're watching this. That's why you're still watching this. Because you know you need to do something about this problem that you have. You know that you need a solution. Verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. Hebrews is, you know, not for us because it's, you know, written to... No, it's, there's some things there that overlap. Okay? We're chastened of the Lord. Right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. You're not going to go to hell from looking at pornography, but your life is going to sure seem like it here on earth. You're going to have problems with your health. You're going to have financial problems. I had a brother write to me recently and he said, I'm having car problems and I've been fooling around with pornography. Do you think that they're related? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen the reverse of that. I've seen times when I'm doing right, I'm living right for the Lord, and I'm preaching His Word and, and really on fire for the Lord, and I'll have vehicle issues, and I don't even know about it. I went to a garage at one point in time, had my truck inspected, and the guy said, how in the world were you driving this thing? He said, the brakes are totally gone in the back of this thing. Well, I didn't even know it. He said, well, man, he said, you could have gotten killed. I know what happened. The Lord was protecting me. But back to the... Uh, way that that thing works when you're in sin, the chastening of the Lord. I had times when I just had vehicle problems and just this problem and that problem and just my life falling apart. Why? Because I was messing around in sin and very vile sin. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was thinking about my own lust and satisfying myself and not thinking about the fact that as I'm looking at this wicked, vile filth put out by the haters of my God, I'm filling my Savior's mind with the same garbage as he's dying on the cross. If that doesn't strike you hard in the heart, you need to get saved because you're lost if it doesn't bother you. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And, you know, I'm going to just tell you, i just lay it out straight here for you. Many, many years ago, praise God, I've been, I've been clean from pornography for a long time now. But many years ago when I was looking at it, this stuff was going on in the porn world. There was literally incest. You could see on some of the, the free porn video websites and whatever else, they'd have incest as a category. I Lord only knows what it is now. You know, I don't even want to know. 
Verse 2, And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed. He's a pervert, in other words. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together with my in my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, look at this, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. This guy was saved. A saved sex pervert. Sinless perfection after salvation? Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, maybe as far as imputation, sure, the Lord will see you as being sinlessly perfect because His righteousness has been imputed to you. But uh, this guy is saved. And what's Paul say? Paul doesn't say, well, you know, as long as he's kind of doing it in private, it's not really, you know, coming out. and You know, others, you know, deliver that guy to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. You say, Brother Brian, I can't... Uh, I can't give up my pornography. I, I just, I, I've tried and I just kind of, is, I just look at it once in a while, only when I need to. Okay, then I deliver you to Satan for the destruction of your flesh. I hope God kills you and gets you out of this world before you make trouble for the body of Christ. You say, you aren't, you're, you're, you're kidding. You wouldn't actually mean that. I mean it with every fiber of my being because I wished it on myself way back when I was involved in that addiction. I wished it many times. I prayed and I said, Lord, Take me out of here. I don't deserve life. And I fought and I fought and I fought that addiction. And as I said, praise God, I got out of it. And I'm going to tell you how to do it right now. Psalm 101. I'll show you the solution. You're struggling with pornography addiction? Here's what you want. Psalm 101, verses 1 through 4. i read the verses and then we'll go back over it. Psalm 101, verse 1. I will sing of mercy and judgment. Unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them which that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Four-step plan. You ready? Number one. I will sing praises, or excuse me, I will sing of mercy and judgment. Unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. Sing praises to God when you're tempted. Next time you go to look at some website, have a hymn book right there by your computer. Okay? Start singing. You get tempted? That's what I did. It's real hard to lust when you're singing praises to Jesus Christ. Actually, it's impossible. And you're going to feel a battle. Friend, it, there's not some kind of, you know, you've got the demon of pornography and it has to be cast out. That is nonsense. Okay? It's your flesh. It's so funny, all these charismatic fools out there, they'll talk about demons and devil possession and all this other stuff. But they don't talk much about their flesh. Okay? Your flesh is your biggest enemy. Let me repeat that. Your flesh is your biggest enemy. Okay? And when you get into that lustful situation, when you start to burn with lust, the best thing that you can do, just get a hymn book. Don't, don't try to find, go, I'm going to go on the internet and try to find a hymn or something. No, 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 no. Because you're on the internet and then you're kind of, well, I couldn't find anything. I just kind of look real quick. Uh -huh, yeah. You need to get a hymn book. Okay, go to a used bookstore, go to some place and just get a hymn book. Print out some hymns from, from online or whatever else and just start singing. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Just make a fool out of yourself. Just start singing really loud. Sing praises to the Lord. That's step number one. It'll just take that lust and just go, and just put it right out. I'll tell you. Number two. Cleanse your house of sinful things. Verse 2, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Well, yeah, Brother Brian, but you know, I mean, these movies, I, it's, it's, I don't watch them that much. I like the Star Wars movies. They're older movies. And I mean, I, I got them for Christmas the one year. Burn them. So what would you say? Burn them. 
burn them. Um, I got some historical uh, documentary stuff over here. Yeah, they're secular and things, but you know, there's a few words and, you know, kind of you know, burn them. Do you want a perfect heart? You need to get radical. If you have a pornography addiction problem, you need to get radical. No compromising. You say, well, I don't know. Okay, then continue to struggle with it. Continue to struggle with it. Continue to put Jesus Christ to an open shame on the cross. Continue to put that kind of vile stuff in there in his mind with the body of Christ. Continue to get his chastening. Continue to have him scourge you. Or you can be radical. You can have a perfect heart by just going, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. I want this stuff out of my house. I remember I had a, a, a guy write to me years ago when I came out with my original pornography, you know, the epidemic, pornography epidemic thing. And he told me, he said, Brother Brian, he said, you convicted me of this whole, whole thing. Lord used you to convict me. And he said, uh, you said about, you know, if you can't handle pornography addiction, destroy your computer, get rid of your computer, get rid of your cell phone, whatever. And he said, you're never going to hear from me again because after I'm done sending this email, I'm going to go out and destroy my computer. I think it was maybe an iPhone or something like that. He said, I'm going to go out and destroy it. I'd rather have victory over the sin of pornography than this stinking computer. Are you going to walk within your house with a perfect heart? You say, well, these are radical, you know, steps. Yeah, they are. Uh, David was a man after God's own heart. You might want to think about that. Number three, ironically, verse number three. All right. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall, it shall not cleave to me. All right. Um, I have that verse printed out and I have it. I cut it out. I printed it out on my computer, piece of paper, you know, uh, with a printer, obviously, and printed that thing out and I taped it to the top of my uh, monitor there. I got the thing. Psalm 101, verse 3 taped it right on top of my monitor so I look at that thing every single time I get online. Yeah. But what's the key there? I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Um, you're going to have to develop a holy hatred for pornography. Not a, well, you know, there, there can be no tolerance here. Zero tolerance. And I don't mean go out and kill porn stars or something. Not at all. I'm saying hate what they're doing. You have to have a holy hatred for pornography. They are the enemies of Jesus Christ. And for you to get a thrill from the enemies of Jesus Christ, you are in very serious sin and in very big trouble with the Lord. Let me tell you that. All right? And, the, and you say, well, this is Old Testament. New Testament says that we are to hate evil. All right? Abhor that which is evil, you know, cleave to that which is good. So don't tell me, you know, we'll duck it because it's back in the Old Testament they were hateful. And whatever. No, no. It's New Testament doctrine as well. Number four. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. You know one of the ways that you'll get into pornography viewing when you're young, when you're a teenager? Going over to your uh, buddy's house and they say, hey, look at this. Mm -hmm. You go off to public school and uh, now, I mean, I'm from the generation of paper-based, you know, pornography. But nowadays, it's electronic. So now the kids come in and they go, hey, look at this, you know, this is my iPhone here. Whoa, look at that. Uh-huh. Yep. You know what you need to do? As a saved man or woman, you need to say, I will not know a wicked person. So-and-so, uh, -so, every time they come around, they tell me dirty jokes. They say this, that I can't be around you anymore. They say, Why? You're causing me to, to fall for the, the lust of pornography. I'm sorry. I can't be around you anymore. You know, and, and I've seen that thing too a lot of times. You actually have a lost person respect you more for that than if you're just a little jellyfish, a little spineless coward that doesn't want to take any kind of stands. Yeah, they might blow up and yeah, you'll, you'll have an argument and whatever else, but I'll tell you right now, in the end, they'll, they'll respect you more. But uh, if you want the solution for getting rid of your pornography addiction. Psalm 101, verses 1 through 4. Four-step program. Sing to the Lord when you're tempted. Number two, cleanse your house. Number three, hate pornography. You need to develop a holy hatred for that filthy garbage and say, 
Why would I get a sick thrill? Why would I pleasure myself to a bunch of God-hating people? And number four, I don't want anything to do with lost people. I will not know a wicked person. Stay away from me. Oh, but, I, but we've known each other since we were little. I don't care. I will not know a wicked person. That's the solution. You know, there's a lot of things I preach and teach on and, and I can say, well, you know, I know what the Bible says and I personally have never struggled with this thing and whatever else. But, I, you know, the scriptures are clear on this. So, you know, I'll stand by the Bible and whatever. Uh, but when it comes to this subject, uh, I'm an expert. I am an expert on pornography addiction and on having victory over that sin. There's nobody out there that's going to tell me any different. There's nobody out there that's going to contradict what I've said and say, well, you know, he's, he tries, Brian tries, but he doesn't really understand the subject. Oh, buddy, I understand this subject. And I'm not being prideful by saying that. I'm saying you're looking at a very wicked, wicked man here in the past. I struggled with that thing, and I struggled for years and years and years with that thing, and I know how to get victory over it. And God chastened me and whipped me, and I got scars on my body to prove it almost to the point of him taking me home shortly after I got saved because I was such a vile pervert. You know, and, you know, and, and I, I know how it feels. You know, you say, well, you know, I feel kind of dumb calling myself a pervert. You better start doing it. You better come to the realization of what you are and the, the, the trouble that you're in with God. Uh, you're doing something that uh, Paul didn't say. Well, you know... We can just kind of counsel this guy that's with his father's wife and this sex pervert here that's bringing reproach upon the body of Christ. Let's just kind of talk to him and deliver that man unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. And let me tell you something. If I find out that you're a pervert and you have no conviction and you're not getting any kind of chastening, and well, I shouldn't say that. If you're not getting chastening, you're a bastard. You're not even saved. But if you're some kind of a pervert and you just get through the chastening and you're just whatever, I'm going to pray that God delivers you over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Paul did. Um, you're not worthy to call yourself a Bible-believing Christian. It's that serious. So I pray you get that thing fixed up. All right? Um, there are no excuses. And you know it. If you're genuinely saved and you're struggling with pornography... You know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm speaking right to you right now. Those images are in your mind and the guilt that goes along with it. You better get it fixed up. You better get that thing cleansed out of your life. Follow Psalm 101 verses 1 through 4. All right? That's going to be it. I pray you take heed to my serious warning here. Um, you can lie to me, by the way, too. I'll say that because I've known a lot of people. They lie to me. Um, I can't be there in your life and whatever else. You can pretend that you're somebody that you're not uh, online and whatever. You can deceive me very easily. But you're not going to deceive God. You're not going to pull one over on Him. He knows exactly what you're looking at. And uh, so does the Internet people, too, that are tracking every move you make online. They're forming records of you. They, uh, they see what you're looking at. You better hope it never comes up. And you better get that thing cleansed between you and the Lord before it's too late.